Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, take that Hello. midweek break, talk about the fun stuff that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else. I'm Vince Stone. That is Joe Bryant. And over there is one Pedro Mateus with you joining us Hello. live. Man, how's everybody do it? I know, Jill, you're like all wound up. You're happy. You're sad. Yes. You're, um, yeah. you're all over the place, man. Yeah. Why? Is it just... Is it, um, too, too many stuffed penguins in your background. Well, let's go down. Yeah. Let's get you so wound. Not enough. No, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm I'm stressed. I'm wound up, but it's a good kind of stress. But I'm just ah! yes. So scale, scale, scale <laughs> is almost here. And Jordan is flying in Sunday and staying with me one month night. And then him and Empty are getting an Airbnb. And then we're getting our big Airbnb um, for at our. Our LGC Airbnb house at scale when it starts March 5th. So, and uh, speaking of which, make sure you can you can get 50% off your registration um, at for scale using the promo code Chicks C H I X. And that's a really nice. cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that and seeing what you critters come up with. Oh yeah, that's, we got a uh, lot. We have a lot going on. <laughs> it's always good when plans catch on fire and fall apart at the last minute. Yay! No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, check this out. Hey, everyone. I made a thing. I did. 100%. It's real. It's real, boy. I put it out. It's a uh, pilot episode mm -hmm. of the first, like, new hole from cloth thing that I've made since this show. So, what? Like, yeah. billions of years ago, whenever this came out. It's called Interfacing Linux. It is me, mm -hmm. me pulling a sneaky because I'm trying to uh, trick thrifty musicians and creators alike into coming over to the Linux side of things for their recording and music production needs. And the way I'm going to do that mm -hmm. is show them how to save a bunch of money with Linux because we can still use the FireWire interfaces. We're still going to be doing USB interfaces and stuff like that. But in order to do that, I got to get the database updated because it's out of date. Mm -hmm. It's incomplete. And oh, boy. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. It's going to be an expensive errand, as I've already learned. You can buy the interfaces really cheap. You're still going to pay $50 on shipping, but more on that on 11. I'm <laughs> really happy how the first one turned out, but I do want your feedback. It is up for our patrons because you are our bosses. Uh, that's going to sit for a week. I'll let everyone get a good look at it. Give me some feedback. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. What needs changing? We'll roll it out to the general public uh, probably this time next week. And by then, I'll be able to take that feedback tighten it up a little bit. We'll try to do it, keep it under 10 minutes so somebody can come in like, hey, man, I'm thinking I want this. Maybe I can get this working. Hey, here's how you get it working. Or, hey, this works out of the box. Or, hey, don't buy this, even though it's a really good deal. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's what I did. Pedro, what are you up to? <laughs> uh, not much. This Mozilla's week, latest this Android really... app takes its VPN <laughs> service beyond Firefox. Yep. Chill. Yeah, so <laughs> Hey man, you Sorry said you weren't up to anything. I was messing with you. <laughs> no, no, no. I was thinking of Ben on his uh, he playing awesomely on his guitar. Oh yeah, that's right. Spoilers. <laughs> yes. Spoilers if you <laughs> I'm a huge fan of publicly shaming myself because it encourages me to get better. So if you want to see me go Oh man, I haven't played one of these in ten years. Um, so that's that's it's, it's also going to help me get better over the years as I'm doing this because it's rough right now. But yes, there there might be a minute and a half to two minutes of me playing a guitar, <laughs> doing interface testing along with microphones and stuff like that. Okay, now back to the fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. So yes, Mozilla has just launched a standalone VPN app for Android. It's called the Firefox Private Network VPN app in the Google and it's in the Google Play Store for Android and is available for a limited time beta price of $5 a month. And what's awesome about this is that it comes uh, just after the Mozilla layoffs we talked about in January and Mozilla is hoping that this will increase their revenue. Yay! And I think if they do it right, it definitely will. And I look forward to trying a Linux desktop client of Firefox VPN. That would be awesome. 
That'd be really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's the bit that's not <laughs> currently very awesome because uh, they're mm-hmm. not offering yeah. a Linux version of the Firefox <laughs> VPN. And yes. I'd, I'd be totally okay with them not having a dedicated client for Linux. Uh, they can do what private internet access does, which is they provide a little script that sets up o- open VPN or whatever it is that Firefox is using. Um, t- so that it works mm-hmm. with the uh, network manager. So you don't need a dedicated client. You can just use the network manager, use the VPN connections from there. It just hits their servers. Boom, everyone wins. The other thing that's also not awesome about this particular beta period, US only. They do say that they're rolling mm-hmm. out uh, to other regions soon, but uh, yeah. not yet. No, nope, not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> Dude, uh... <laughs> Five dollars a month isn't terribly bad, but no, that seems good. everyone wants a VPN. Do you like five dollars a month? You're like, eh, you know the comic, and with like holding out the money, then re- yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's good hygiene. I like it. It is using WireGuard though, right? So yes, yes, good tech on that. What did yeah. op- whatever became of Opera's thing? Didn't they roll out of the uh, VPN service like two minutes ago? Yeah, but it's yeah, it's. <laughs> It's just for web pages, though, and it's limited to the browser. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like Opera a was also, you know, <laughs> caught doing some shady um, lending to people. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Opera's going to be <laughs> Opera, man. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Mozilla, keep up the good work. Introducing Extern OS Beta 2. This is the thing that... Looks pretty interesting until you get to a certain thing. More than that, 11. But what is it? It's an operating system. Lo and behold, we're talking about that. Um, It offers a unique user interface and experience compared to traditional systems. Well, we're getting there. It enables Mm -hmm. a new way of writing applications with web technologies. Mm, Where am I going with this? Something, (laughs) something, Node.js. Ah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, JavaScript yeah, OS. A little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is a new beta zone, 222. It has a gang of new keyboard shortcuts for their video player that's built into it. I mean, this is like a contained bit of kit. Um, yeah. They have added multiple instance support for the terminal because I guess apparently you could have a terminal of one VT open. Good on them. And there's a fix for the uh, file manager scroll bar that was like seven pixels out of alignment, which would cost you not be able to scroll. It's weird, mm-hmm. but I like weird. Mm-hmm. So I might look into trying this and forcing Pedro to run it. It looks a lot like Chrome <laughs> yeah. OS, if we're being honest. It really does look a lot like Chrome OS. That's exactly but where I, guess... I was going with the is this before you really start h- hating on it. It's Chrome yeah. OS, man. I mean, but it's like a homebrewed version. Yeah, it is a homebrewed version yeah. of Chrome OS. And uh, there is the open source version of Chrome OS, Chromium OS, uh, which you can freely download and install and whatever. But uh, going back to Externos, because that's how they spell it, um, there's a little bit about the, um, if you go to the, I think it's a developer page, uh, the developer writes, I'll upload as much of the source code as I can on my GitHub once I get my laptop back and have some time to do uh, some cleanup of my code. It's like, um, Mm -hmm. okay, so (laughs) not open source yet, gotcha. Uh, Also, it's a JavaScript (laughs) OS. Um, We already have GNOME trying to be that, so uh, nothing new there. And uh, the whole not, you know, sharing the whole of the source code. I thought we were. Not filling me with confidence there. I thought we were. (laughs) We were almost there, Pedro. We almost made it an entire month without you taking a swipe at Gnome. So close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Might have just lost some yeah. money on that. <laughs> <laughs> don't bet on that. that. Seriously, don't bet on that. I'll take a swipe at everything. Dangerous. Especially the things I like. <laughs> That's our Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think having a dedicated OS focused on Node.js and app and web development is is actually really cool. And I actually had fun. I tested the live USB. And yeah, Extern OS has a slick and custom UI that was created with NWJS. 
And actually, to me, it looks a lot like Windows 10, <laughs> kind of a, a, a really beautiful and slick version of Windows 10. And the one big thing you can't get away from, which I think is really cool, is it's everything's transparent. All the windows are, are transparent. Even if you launch Firefox, it, it comes in transparent. And it, it's, it's very cool and kind of futuristic looking. And I enjoyed playing around with it. <laughs> Really they started cool. to introduce transparency around the Vista days. I totally wasn't Nothing about yeah. to say <laughs> futuristic. <laughs> yeah. Remember when transparency was cool? And it's transparent. It's neat. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say but, that. Then. But it's not just Windows, though. It's all the icons and everything. They can all be set up to be transparent. Oh, so I you're mean, saying like the whole user wow, interface. Wow. You can straight up put it like on confusing hard mode. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes I straighten no less. Yes, I straighten. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, where are we at with our um? It, it me. Uh, what do you have enabled as far as desktop effects? I begrudgingly have enabled shadows just because I cut them off. I forgot mm. to cut them off last time. I was. Ah, see, I disabled <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> I disable shadows and I disable uh all of the Windows animations that are like yeah not the closing and the opening ones okay. and those are just like the zoom in from the middle you still That's do it. those <laughs> the, yeah. like when it opens it sort of looks like it was zoomed in mm -hmm. from the center okay. so that's it that that's the only animation i that's, have <laughs> yeah i i keep it very limited uh on the animation as well because i i went i went you know better memory better memory efficiency <laughs> especially right now because i'm using ubuntu mate with the old gnome so i've turned all those animations off and everything <laughs> jlx compositing the gpu to the rescue <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah but what's cool also about um extern os is that um in some ways it's very similar to to the other uh, web-based technologies distro we talked about um, a while ago, the Jade desktop environment on the Manjaro web dad distro. Oh, I was wondering. And... It's like, oh, did we talk about Emacs recently? <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it, it had a similar flow to that one. And granted, it's made using a lot of the same technologies, so it makes sense. The interface and is a little probably a lot of the same but... code too. But yeah, it has all the transparency. <laughs> transparency, all the things. <laughs> That's it. It's transparency, the operating system. Hopefully the source yeah. code will get up there and that'll be a thing. That's cool. Keep an eye out. Uh, but we need to have a little bit of a discussion. Jeffrey Paul wrote earlier mm -hmm. uh, last week. It's like Discord. It's not an acceptable choice for free software projects. 3,835 words, approximately a 21 minute read. Okay, um, it's mm -hmm. it's simple. Free software projects, italicies, should not use Discord. This goes equally for any sort of public interest group. <laughs> Here's why. Um, okay, uh, I, I'm going to go out on a limb just right here at the top and say, uh, you know what? Do you know? Do you want some bigger issue in open source? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's Discord. I don't. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, uh, gatekeeping. Shite like this is a bigger <laughs> issue than Discord. Yes. Just, just going crazy on that one. That's just my thoughts. I don't know. What? Gatekeeping in the open source community? Just, Whatever are you talking about? Um, I do not know. <laughs> this is not possibly a thing in our open source community. Everything is perfectly fine. <laughs> yep. We are all separate individuals. <laughs> But it's, yeah, no, I, I get it. And the whole article is like, okay, privacy, 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 censorship, privacy, privacy. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get it. If you want privacy, don't use Discord. Just seriously. If you actually read the uh, end user license agreement and the terms of service for Discord, you will realize that you don't have any. If you're using Discord, anything that you say or type can and will be used against you in a court of law, if it comes to that. Uh, but if you are looking for people with time on their hands and, you know, like-minded individuals that happen to enjoy maybe a spot of gaming, maybe a spot of anime, maybe a spot of other things that you can find on Discord mm -hmm. that shall not be discussed on this particular show. Um, we both know you're <laughs> admitting are. Discord. I've seen it. Quit trying to hide it. <laughs> Stop. Just let it go, man. It's okay, man. It's 2020. 
Yeah, I almost joined the uh, Fedora Discord the other day. Almost. Uh, but <laughs> it's... Um, <laughs> It's a, actually a very good place to find people and to talk to people and yeah. have, like, these crazy group discussions that eventually devolve into uh, either poop jokes or something else, because we have the perfect example with our very own Discord. Yes. And <laughs> the amount of stuff that people in our Discord get up to, it's like, oh, that that's actually a re really neat tool for people to get together and work on stuff together and discuss things that they want to do or things that they think about it's great for that but no it, it's not private clearly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know these issues are true across the most popular social networking apps and services including google's facebook's and twitter so it's just you you give up part of your privacy to be on these platforms. That's just the thing we gotta deal with. And you know, I the the writer was talking about how you can't run Discord easily in the Tor browser. Well, most of them you can't run in the Tor browser because they have to know your IP, which you know, it's sad, but it's just true. It's something we we deal with. And yeah, just Discord has been wonderful for Linux Gamecast, and there are other alternatives out there, but the, there are very few alternatives out there that also do video, which we need here at Linux Gamecast <laughs> for our patrons. <laughs> yeah, you see, I so. only communicate with smoke signals because it's open source. <laughs> and... <laughs> Come on, Ven, it's 2020, vape signals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm a hipster. Um, I only use smoke. <laughs> I burn windows, windows box. Bonfire smoke. Yeah. Empty windows 95 boxes that I collected on the internet. Um, <laughs> go where the people are. That, that's kind of the important thing. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like if you're like, you must sell your kitten. And, but if that's where everyone's at, you're going to be selling some kittens. That's just how it works, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, yeah. these are words to write words. Yeah. And it's like, oh, be warned. It's been going on since the 90s. It's not a perfect world. You have like talks and all these other open methods. They're great. They're awesome. It's not where grandma's at. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to work. That's why Skype's unfortunately still a thing, right? Yeah. Yes. It's not because yes. there are not better technologies. It's where the critical mass is. And guess what? Grandpa, I say this as a grandpa, critical mass has moved over to Discord. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's popular to hate mm -hmm. now. It's reached that like, ugh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that yeah it, it's triggered that thing and that type of person that's cool whatever i don't have clandestine stuff to talk about no open source i'm like Psst, yeah do, do you want to see a linux gif come on we, we got to keep big yeah. government out of this though um, and, big and you know within our our community they can use irc or twitch if they prefer and well, we have um, twitch and irc you know? we always will have yeah. the irc we have the bridge just tied in i mean if you want to use irc yeah. you can jump in our live channel anytime you want we're there to talk with you and we have a discord mm -hmm. community where we're like yo let's just have like a smaller chat so we're not dealing with like drive by like man linux dump pop it in you know that's just locked into patrons which it's awesome because it's a really cool place. That I don't have to like moderate. Everybody's chilling there. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> good times with that. Yay. Pipewire. <laughs> we got some news on that. What is that? Ooh. Pipewire is a XKCD comic done right though, because this, this I want to <laughs> believe. Um, I really do. This is Pipewire zero three zero big release in the fact that it's going to work with a lot of stuff. Oh, what's that? Jack, Jack mm -hmm. compatibility. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, complete redesign <laughs> of the scheduling mechanisms that make it possible to run a Jack compatibility layer with comparable performance to Jack 2. Latency is a big issue that we got to deal with, but Pipewire's been making a ton of progress lately. And this, unfortunately, Pipewire is not Raptor bus proof. As I learned out, this is the work of one, one dude at Fedora. Um, but it's still very early days. You know, the Jack support, it's gotten in there, yeah. which has made me happy. Uh, the also support is mm -hmm. stable. Pulse still needs some work. But the way to help out with that is to install it, get it up and running, and test it out. And yeah. if you're unfamiliar, you're like, what, pipe wire? I thought that was the video thing. Yes, and <laughs> at some point in the future, yes, yes, <laughs> it's going to do for video what this audio is going to. This is going to do for audio. Though. It's the one unifying standard. It's if I'm developing an app, 
I target pipe wire for my sound system and eventually for video or whatever. I, I, I'm sure I don't care about the video stuff. Sorry, the audio stuff interests me. I'm going to target pipe wire and pipe wire is going to do everything. It's like, oh, you need to get all the bolts. Okay. Or you want to tie into Jack, we can do that. And we're going to give you a nice, simple interface to make all that happen or just directly into also back in because you're a psychopath. But that's brilliant. It's what Apple has done with core audio. Give them credit yeah. for that. If you're dealing mm -hmm. with pro audio, there's a reason there's a lot of pro audio stuff done on Mac because you plug it in and it works. Yeah, even high end yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, just looking forward to this. And like Chrome, the latest builds of Chrome have support for Pipewire built into them. Unlike Jack, which has been the bane of my existence <laughs> because I have to do this Jack Pulse audio bridge, then do that, then send it over the network. It, it's a bit of a nightmare. Then I have to do it again when it gets over the fiber card into this. It's Pipewire, save me. Um, that's all I'd say. Yeah. Not much. It's a, it's a little release, whatever. There's a new one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, much like Ven, I do hope that this will be the one sound and in, in the future video framework to yes. unify them all. But yeah, at this point, uh, from my perspective, because yeah, you have Ven that's going all technical uh, and actually telling you what you're doing wrong. For me, it's more the user scenario is like okay i want the exact same kind of functionality that i get with pavu control i can control all the yes. different streams i can uh set volume levels per sync i can um select which devices are enabled and which devices are playing or receiving audio at any one point i want that kind of functionality to be just as easily exposed through pipewire like it is now through pulse no so Please? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Pretty please. I forbid. Uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things I did notice is, uh, like, the, the last paragraph is, uh, Pipewire comes with GStreamer plugins to consume uh. and produce data for Pipewires. Like, wait, hold on. Isn't this the thing that's supposed to, like, replace GStreamer? It's the thing that will yeah, work I think with eventually. everything. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. yeah. Go <laughs> I mean, it, and you're going to have to have Pipewire to deal with Waylet on the desktop when it comes to video. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, very true. We'll, we'll see. Like right now, the focus is just hammering on it. It's not to put the yeah. Tonka to a front end on it, so you'll be happy. Yeah, and the pipe wire. I mean, devs, again, from like, the user uh, perspective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what's up right now. Like, right, it, it works with yeah. you know, you can pull it up in like KT out the patch bay if you use Jack. You're mm -hmm. familiar with that. It can pull in, pull all your sinks, and I've I've watched a couple of demos with that. And it's like, okay, that's really neat. I'll play around with it was a bit more stable. I'm probably like the, like, oh, yes, you run it and give me all the data bits. And I'm like, can this production. Uh, but I, I look forward to playing with it more. Which is a little bit more mature when I have the slightest up. Also, NetJack. Don't forget about NetJack. You don't have NetJack oh, in there. It's yeah. dead to me. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I only say that because at a talk, and we're like, oh, NetJack. Yeah, we don't really know how to use it. Call me. I'll help you out. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, GIMPs. <laughs> yeah. So this is really cool. GIMP 2.10.18 has been released. And there is something I've been wanting for a very long time with GIMP. It has a new 3D transform tool. Yay. So this allows you to rotate and move 2D layers on the XYZ axis. And, you know, it's industry standard ac across all the, you know, proprietary graphics and animation apps, as well as some open source ones. And it's, and it's just industry standard. So this, this brings the GIMP up, you know, uh, closer to the Adobe Photoshop, Photoshops of the world. And the other cool thing is that the toolbox is more consolidated and organized and similar tools are now grouped together, like all your transform tools, your scale, your move, your rotate. And um, uh, now it has the, uh, the 3D transform tool. So that's just really awesome. And they're also, yay, very highly customizable, unlike Photoshop's where you, in Photoshop, you can't move around all your, <laughs> your, your tools and controls. It's very annoying. Dude, that is but so great. This having... is open source. <laughs> a fully customizable UI because yes, it, it it's really insight into what particular disorder each person has when you look at yes, their desktop. Yes. You're like, huh, 
Okay. <laughs> Show me your gimp UI and I'll tell you who Pretty you much. are. Pretty much. I mean, you'd, yeah. you'd be like, oh, we're never getting in an elevator together. Um. <laughs> yeah. So this release is basically a lot of those things that people wanted from Photoshop are, are coming to GIMP. Mm. So that's that's really awesome. And yeah. it has better PSD support, which is always a good the thing. The thing that people want mm -hmm. from Photoshop is uh, Photoshop. Uh, they want that UI. They want those um, yeah. keyboard uh, shortcuts. They want all of that. And if mm -hmm. you have the gall to put yeah. GIMP in front of them, sorry, honey, but... <laughs> Nor it was very much the case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, if you have the gall to put GIMP in its stock configuration in front of them, they go, eh, I don't like this. Yeah. Well, All right, fine. Yeah. This new version of GIMP has these tool, uh, the the tools in a strip on the left hand side, just like Photoshop. Yeah, whatever. So it's closer Both of you, looking you, to looking. You, you can just shut up because <laughs> I, I was trained how to use a program, not a computer. And this is yeah. not my program. <laughs> a program or interface. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What I'd really like I to see. I started using the GIMP before Photoshop even existed. So that's a thing. <laughs> Photoshop used to be Aldous Photo Styler <laughs> back in the day. I, I'm old too. <laughs> so. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> but hey, more functionality is always welcome, especially when it comes to like. GIMP and uh, the rest yeah. of the free software. What I want out to there. see happen yes, with the GIMP is the same thing that we've seen with Blender. You know, the people getting behind it. And that's something we've not seen yes. with like companies and industries and development houses getting behind Blender, throwing them, even Epic's like buying here some, have some money and do yeah. things. It's we've not to seen now. this with, on the 2D side. So hopefully that'll be yeah. something that happens coming up in the 2020. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. It's the last Friday of the month, Jill. Yes, what, yes. What, Jackpot what night. What does that mean? Friday night foobar. Uh, Friday nights at at <laughs> seven thirty Pacific. Like Friday PM. Um, <laughs> seven thirty. Somewhere Eastern. among the PMs. No. Yes. No. Eight thirty. I'm sorry. Eight thirty Eastern. <laughs> 5.30 Pacific, we play um, a Jackbox, the Jackbox Party Pack. Mm -hmm. So that happens once a month. So uh, if they, they wanted to come Friday like hang out in our Discord and like participate, mm. uh, who gets to do that? Oh, everyone. All our patrons get to come in and uh, either be on voice or in video and join us while we're playing the games. And it's so much fun. And you can be, if if you don't come in voice and video, you can be an audience member and join us uh, uh, in the games as an audience member. Speaking of Patreon, that's the best that. way to support mm -hmm. our show. You can do that, patreon.com forward slash letting schemecast each and every single thing we do. And uh, as I said at the top of the show, I got a new little thing right here. I want everyone to come check out. Interfacing Linux, mm -hmm. that's the first thing. Uh, something we did roll out early Last week, if you are curious, I did a new thing uh, with that. Mr. Mackey, the Christmas dot mm -hmm. control service. You can go check that out. That's open. We don't do like permanent paywalls, but we do like to do a little early access for the people that make this show possible. Um, we got uh, the shopping list for the studio, that stuff. But the reason I'm bringing this up is there's also one for interfacing Linux because that's just like, Hey man, this is what I'm planning on buying. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to come pick anything up. I'm asking for your comments. Be like, don't get that, or yeah, that'd be neat to see in a video. Let me know. Mm. Merch, Jill. When was the last time you bought a shirt? Oh, <laughs> just uh, last week. In fact, I had the uh, Use Me Penguin shirt in pink. I was wearing last. That week. <laughs> is incorrect, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> no. The last shirt you purchased was on Saturday. Oh, yes. oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I purchased the Use Me shirt in black for Jordan so that it would be here. Um, we, I had it sent to my house so it would be here in time for when Jordan comes for scale. So, yes. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but, yes, I did wear it last week. <laughs> You did wear it last week. I'm, uh, we do have merch. That's kind of the border right there. If you want to um, adorn yourself in some of our wacky, zany clothing, I believe we all have merch except for Pedro. Oh. Yep. yep. <laughs> He's too busy. got to fix that. <laughs> I'm too busy not having money. Can't be bothered. He's got Nicolas Cage posters to buy. 
<laughs> that was, uh, you know, uh, very oh, kind yeah, of look from at this. Look Arthur. Yeah, he's Arthur. trying to throw you under the bus, man. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we have Libra Pay. Bunch of bunch of different ways over at More importantly, the best thing you can do uh, is to share the show on social media, stuff like that. Spam force, but spam force very politely and be like, Kanichi Wab, delete expletives. Um, here's the show. Do, <laughs> do it the nice way, the polite way, the Vin way. And uh, that is kind of brilliant. What else do we have? Uh, we did the birch. We did that. We did that. We did the Patreon. Oh, yeah. You do get uh, access to that Discord we were talking about. Uh, we're there the other six days a week if you want to chat with us. That's where we discuss things like video cards. So I'm like, hey, Pedro, what about the video card I talked about? It's like, what are you talking about, man? Crickets. It never happened. <laughs> it's where we organize and discuss some things. Yes. And uh, we have pre-pre super shows. And if you want the full uncut versions of these shows, we make those available in podcast format for you to download with a custom RSS feed. And uh, you get to feel good. Be like, I'm helping this nonsense. And that's going to be awesome. Pedro, you're going to benchmark mice. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, Logitech G903, the uh, Rokat Kova, the 2016 version, and the um, Corsair M55 RGB Pro that uh, Mike G got me. Thank you very much for that. Uh, once uh, the CKB and X people figure out what exactly kind of moon magic Corsair did with these particular mice, and uh, it is fully supported on Linux like the other two already are, there will be a three-way mouse shootout coming. It's brilliant. Cool. You, you gotta love it. And Pedro's constructed the situation where like, I'm working on it, but I can't do anything. <laughs> I, the whole point of me putting this in the wish list was like, okay, as soon as they support it, I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, kind of showed up the next day. <laughs> You're doing better than me. Do you know what I put? I, I don't use a wish list uh, as very well. I use it as a reminder list of like things to get. So I got up this morning to get my Hydra cufflinks. Because <laughs> I'm an adult and I totally am not going to wear Hydra cufflinks. And they were sold out. Hail Hydra. Yep, I'm just saying, man. I was like, man. I was a little bummed out. So if you're wondering why there's Hydra cufflinks on our uh, studio thing, it's because that was like... <laughs> And they're sold out. That was my reminder last night of like, oh, I want to remember to get those in the morning. And they're gone. Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> Let's get into a little Let's slice get. of diabetes. Diabetes pie. Mm, pie. Mm-hmm. Is that meat Yum. pie? Because it looks like meat pie. Yes. Got, I think um, it has walnuts in it. Ew. Yes. <laughs> Don't you love ground beef walnut nut pie? Uh, I hate walnuts. I, I'm not opposed to either of those things. Middle uh, note. Or middle note things. walnuts. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, this one is a uh, little power um, checker regulator. Whoa, it's basically whoa, whoa, a... Whoa, um, whoa, calm down. Tap, just dial back on the technical stuff, man. <laughs> We're just average people. <laughs> okay, so uh, as the article title so clearly explains it, it is a Raspberry Pi controlled DC load. So, basically, you can set exactly what kind of uh, voltage you want uh, going through whatever it is that you're powering and the Raspberry Pi will have the brains to uh, basically sort it out. And the one thing I, I was reading, they have like a full breakdown with schematics much like that and they have a video where they show uh, how it works. And it's got a, an LCD screen on it. It gives you the current voltage, uh, the current, uh, everything else that's uh, going through the power lines, whatever DC power lines you happen to be feeding through it, and that's really neat. But they printed the enclosure off of PETG, you know, the standard um, filament that you use for 3D printers. And they were saying, it's like, oh yeah, the actual power supply that's driving this whole thing, it gets up to like 75C and PTG is rated for like 80. So mm. that's getting a bit toasty. It's almost as hot as my yeah. thighs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like, okay, uh, yes, uh, like the uh, passive DC to DC power supplies, even the one that I have in the Steam box, they can get a bit toasty. That's why it helps to have a fan. And they actually do have look at the chunk of those of very... aluminium on the regulators, dude. Um. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need it. The, you need the heat sink. Mosfets. And they use the exact same um they use the exact same Noctua teeny tiny little uh forty millimeter oh, by two centimeter yep. fan. Yep. What can Brown do for they you? They use the exact same one to pull air out and just get the heat away from it as quickly as possible. It's the same setup I have uh in the steam box. So yeah, it's like okay, that, that works. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. Man. I mean, Jill, yeah, this I want is you to build one. Oh, oh, actually, I, I could with someone's house. I, I'm not an electronics. No, engineer, that's why I want you to build one to do, while drinking. I do know how to solder. <laughs> <laughs> I do know how to do some basic Blindfolded. things. Blindfolded. So, yeah. Suspended but having, you from know... the ceiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no way. With no a way. strobe light. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is a really That'll good awesome. option. I'll give for, Steve some glow sticks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, call me. <laughs> well, I think this is actually really cool because having a high quality and uh, having a high quality and commercial power supply testers, um, they can be qu quite expensive. And if you know what you're doing, this is a great way to save money and challenge yourself doing it. Um, this works for power supplies, for batteries. You can test USB cables. It's it's really uh, a jack of all trades, and it's it's nice to have this one. This one looks like it's it's very well made and will work very nicely. <laughs> that is very cool. So what do we have? Mm -hmm. Oh, new pie, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the pie Ooh. slips out. New PCB <laughs> version for the USB C power fix. Yay. I mean. Nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, <laughs> it took them a while. <laughs> this revision was silently pushed out uh, nice and quietly so people wouldn't stop buying the old one with absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, the previous one works. I mean, it, you just can't use any other power supply outside of the official one. Well, you for the could most part. if you get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Actually, most USB-C cables are smart enough that uh, if you plugged it into a Pi and to any other power supply, it would go, no, that's an audio device. I'm not going to give it power. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that thing's not rated properly. So, yeah, that, that, that's kind of, that was kind of the issue because, yeah, like Jill said, it took them a while, but they finally released the fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's good to see, man. Uh, that's going to do it. Uh, we get a little bit of feedback, though, don't we? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. And yes. if you would like to contribute some feedback uh, for the show, <laughs> by all means, don't send it all at once. Or, you know, do. I'm not your dad. Bring it. Uh, you can go to <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com. Yeah, go figure. Uh, hit the contact button and make sure the show that you send your feedback to is LWDW, unless you have uh, some foul-mouthed comments about that foul-mouthed show we do on Saturdays. That's totally a thing you can do. But yeah, LWDW you say is that, how we get. Yet YouTube always hits the show harder than they do um, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pounces on this show every week. It is like, this is not suitable for most advertisements. I'm like, uh, uh, you win, YouTube. I mean, if your goal was to defeat me into not caring, you win. Because I'm like, all right, just. At, at, at this point, it's spray and pray. It's like, no, people will teach the algorithm for us because we have no idea how it works. Mm. Uh, but yeah. This uh, bit of feedback comes to us from George, and cool. George is uh, it's like, okay, yep, I kind of fumbled the description of free software versus freeware last week, and he <laughs> says, maybe it would be easier to explain the two kinds of free software to people by calling freeware software for free. Just a thought, since not everyone likes beer. You don't like beer. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, yeah, I think that was implied, but... Uh, <laughs> No, that was because I used the uh, like the old free as in free software, not free as in beer. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of butchered that a little bit too, but what else? Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, freeware. I think at this point, if you're watching a uh, or listening to a podcast about uh, Linux news, you probably know what freeware is and what free software, as in free software foundation, is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the thing, man. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. We can agree to disagree, but one thing we got to be solid on is getting out of here, but thinking, oh, the beautiful people are making the show possible. Aww. A little bit of credit. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. We're going to do it. Hang on. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Yay. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>
Yeah, seriously, every single one of you that have contributed to the show and have made this possible, this show, I keep saying it and I will keep saying it, was made possible by all of our executive producers and all of our producers. You all made this possible. We have Jill here because yeah. you all made Aww. this possible. You're awesome. <laughs> Aww. We love you and we are honored each and every week that you fund this show and fund LGC. It's amazing. <laughs> you're awesome. You don't need people to tell you that. That's why you're awesome. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. <laughs> That's why you're a part of our community. Because <laughs> you're lost. <laughs> <laughs> How did I end up here exactly? 